everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this shamrock beanie. This is a modified version of the previous shamrock toque that I also posted on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. This one has a few updates including the yarn selection as well as the stretchy ribbed doubled up brim. So today we're going to be learning how to crochet this hat in the large size. There are two sizes included in the written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, a small and a large. The small fits a about a 20 inch circumference head, while the large is a 22. For this pattern today, you're going to need a copy of the written pattern. The direct link is in the description of this video because you're going to be needing a copy of the color charts. You're also going to be needing three different colors of yarn, or two or three. You can uh, um, adjust it as needed. In the picture and in my sample here, I used Lime Brand Heartland yarn, which is a worsted weight yarn. You're going to need about one and a half balls, and each ball has about 250 yards in it for your color A, which was my green color. This is the color Petrified Forest. You're also going to need about 100 to 120 yards of a color B. This is Grand Canyon. And then about 20 to 30 yards of the black canyon or color C. Today in the video, just so it's easier to see than this darker green, I'm going to be working with the Acadia color. Uh, you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. There's lots of other crochet beanies and free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials on this channel. Our beanie pattern today is worked from the brim up and the brim is worked in rows. So we're going to start by taking our color A and by making a slip knot. Today in the pattern I'll be primarily working that large size. Occasionally I'll give you the stitch counts for the smaller size but if you'd like to follow along again go and grab the free written pattern on richtexturescrochet.com. So after you've worked your slip knot we're going to start by working a foundation chain and for our large size today we're going to chain a total of 25. If you're working the small size you'll want to chain 23 but today we'll chain 25 If you would like your brim to be uh, wider when you fold it over, uh, by all means go and chain however many you would like. It will be folded over though for the hat. So once you've worked your foundation chain, you're going to begin row one of the brim by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. I like to work in the back bumps of my chain because it's going to give me a nice finished ed edge on the other side. Slip stitch into that second chain from your hook and then in in into each chain all the way across. If you really are not a fan of the slip stitch brim, that's not a problem. Instead of working slip stitches here and throughout, you may work a single crochet or even a half double crochet stitch. At the end of row one, chain one and turn your work. We're now going to continue working rows of slip stitches, only this time working in the back loop only. So looking at the tops of your stitches, your back loop is that loop that is the furthest away from you uh, when you're looking at the top of your stitch. So you're only going to be inserting your hook under that back loop you will slip stitch into that first stitch and then slip stitch 
in each stitch all the way across, always working in the back loop. At the end of row two, chain one and turn your work. We're now going to repeat row two, so slip stitch into the back loop only of each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn your work. Repeat that row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 17 or 18 inches, uh, 18 if you're working the larger size, and that's when it's not stretched. So when you stretch it, it should comfortably fit around your head uh, with a 20 to 22 inch circumference. Okay, so work uh, these slip stitches in the back loop only until your brim is the desired size and then meet me back here. Once you have worked your brim to the desired size, it should have a nice stretch to it. We're then going to crochet our two smaller sides together. So just take them out and fold them over like so. Now working along the edge, you can chain one and working through the back loop only of each side of the fabric, you're going to slip stitch all the way across. So just working in the back loops only of each side. Make sure that you're not skipping any stitches. You don't want to leave any gaps or create any bunching in the seam. We are almost there. One stitch left. Once you come all the way across, chain one, and you're going to turn your brim so that it is right side out. You want the seam on the inside. It does show a little bit when you turn up your brim there, but it's not too noticeable with the slip stitch. Once you have turned your hat right side out, we're now going to work the body of our hat working in rounds and we're going to start by working single crochet stitches evenly around this unfinished edge. So to do that, if it helps, you may want to grab a stitch marker, mark the halfway point. For the large size, we're going to work 72 single crochet stitches all the way around. And when you're working these single crochet stitches, you're going to want to keep them fairly loose. This is because when we're working the knit stitch, we're going to be working through the center of these stitches. So keep your single crochets fairly loose. You'll want to work 72 evenly all the way around. If you're working that smaller size, you'll want 64. But I'm just inserting my hook anywhere that feels comfortable and uh, working my single crochets 72 of them all the way around when you come back around to your first stitch you can join with a slip stitch into the first stitch 
at the end of, end of your first round, you're going to join with a slip stitch. Now, because I'm going to be working knit or waistcoat stitches uh, for the next rest of the hat, I'm going to join through working through the center of the post of the first stitch. So this is where you're going to be working your knit stitches. You're going to insert your hook through the post of the next stitch. Sometimes it's easier to insert your hook kind of on an angle, but you just join with a slip stitch. Chain one. Now for round two, we're going to knit stitch or a waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. As I mentioned, to work the knit stitch, instead of inserting your hook under the top two loops, you're going to insert your, hose, your hook through the post of the next stitch. So we've already joined, so we're going to insert our hook through the post, yarn over, drop a loop. Again, you'll want to keep this stitch fairly loose and you're going to yarn over and pull through. Keeping this stitch loose is key. It's going to make it much easier to work as the rows goes on, go on. So again, working a knit stitch in each stitch, inserting our hook through the post of the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two. This is going to give us that knit look. So again, through the post of the stitch, I'm not inserting my hook under the normal two loops, but going right through the center of my single crochet stitch. And you're going to work these knit stitches all the way around and then join with the slip stitch just as we did that first row. Now at the end of round two, as you come around to your final stitch, you're going to switch to your color C. So to switch colors here and throughout, in the stitch previous to the one that you want uh, the color to come out in, you're going to, using your color A, insert your hook, through the center of the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're then going to drop your color A, pick up your color C, place it on your hook, and pull through. You can then just pull your tails a little bit tighter and then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Now it's up to you at this point, if you want to fasten off your color A and then rejoin it later when you pick it up again, you can, or you can leave it attached as I am and draw it up on the inside of your hat. You're then going to, in your color C, chain one, and we're now going to, for round three, work one round of our knit stitches all the way around in each stitch. So again, you're working through the center of the posts of the knit stitches below and working your knit stitches around. So work one knit stitch in each stitch all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Before you join though, you're going to switch to your color B and then join with your slip stitch. Now I'm just coming around here at the end of my round three. I want to switch back to or switch to my color B. Uh, today I'm actually going to switch back to my color A. You can switch to whatever color you would like, but uh, you're just going to switch back 
by completing your stitch as you did before then join with a slip stitch now because we are not going to be using and chain one because we're not going to be using that color C for a while I recommend at this time just trimming it off and setting it aside for now we're now going to uh, take a look at our chart so when you take a look at the charts on uh, the written pattern you'll see that there's one for the size small and one for the large today we're working the large pattern and so beginning at round four you're going to start to follow your chart so you'll see that you've already worked this first row row one we're now working on row two of the chart and you'll be working it in your color B or as I am today my color A and we're going to follow the chart in the pattern now as we work the shamrock now today I'm not going to work the entire chart with you what I will do is I will get you started working some of the more complicated color changes and then leave you to complete working on the chart before you meet me back here so for our large today we've worked the first row of our chart in black we're now going to work two more rounds of uh, our color B now when you are following your chart we're always going to start as we are working right to left in the right handed uh, pattern you're always going to read your chart from right to left so we're working in rounds we're going to keep going around so we're starting down here in this corner we're going to, we worked our round of black then you come back over here to the right hand side and read across as is you always want to keep reading in the same direction and I'll go over that again when I come to working the shamrock so go ahead and work two rounds in your color B and then meet me back here and we'll work these little color changes here for a little bit okay so I'm now at the end of round three on my chart I have now worked the round of black and two rounds of my color B I'm now on the round four here where you can see we're going to be switching cover colors every so often here so you're going to want to have your color A um, or B or C just whatever color you're working your shamrocks in you're going to want to have it on hand for this round so to work this we're starting over here again on the right hand side and we're going to count in we have one two three four five six seven eight stitches worked in uh, our current working color our color B so what we're going to do is we're going to work first of all those eight stitches now after you work eight th stitches you're going to want to switch to your next color so in stitch number eight the one before your color pops up in stitch number eight you're going to want to switch to that next color so I'll work one knit stitch and then two three four five six seven and then the eighth stitch is where I want to switch to the color that I'll be working my shamrocks in so I insert my hook yarn over with my color uh, I'm working with my color A here or your color B then drop that color pick up the color for your shamrock place it on your hook and pull through you'll then just want to pull those tails a little bit tighter now what I'm going to do is I need to work two stitches in my color of the shamrock and then switch back as I am working uh, what I'm going to do is carry this non-working yarn the yarn color I'm not working with 
either in behind or I like to crochet over top of it because it really hides it well. So I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch. I'm going to just crochet over top of the color that's not being used because I want to pull it along uh, with me so that I don't have to keep fastening off and then refastening it again. So I've worked the first stitch. Now I have to work one more stitch in this color and then switch back. So I want to insert my hook, yarn over, drop a loop in my shamrock color. I'm then going to drop it and because I've been carrying my non-working yarn in behind, I can just pick it up, place it on my hook and pull through. I'm now set to continue working and I'm going to carry my non-working yarn along behind again and uh, I'm going to continue working in that previous color. So I go back to my chart and count to see how many stitches I need in this next color. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So sixteen in my next color and then I'm switching back to my shamrock colors again. So here we go. I'm going to work over top of that green yarn so that I can hide it and carry it along with me so that I'm ready to pick it up when I come around to my next color. So there's two, three, keep going until you have 15 and then in that 16 stitch number 16 you're going to switch back to your shamrock color. This is stitch number 15 and then in stitch 16 I want to switch back to my shamrock color which it's right here waiting for me. Place it on my hook and pull through. Work two stitches as according to the chart in my shamrock color switching back to the previous color again in that final stitch and then working another 16. So that's how you basically work the chart. Once you come uh, across all the way to here, you're going to then jump back to row five and work row five as written. I'm going to leave you to continue to work this chart all the way through to this final black uh, round and then meet me back here. So go ahead, grab that chart or if you can see it here in the video, you can pause it and um, grab that chart and work the chart as seen here, always working right to left, changing colors as needed and then meet me back and we'll work the top of our hat. Once you have completed working the chart, this is what your work should look like with different colors, possibly. And what we're going to do now is work in our color A, two rounds of knit stitches. You can also go ahead and weave in any ends, but other than that, you're going to chain one, work a knit stitch in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch, chain one, and repeat. So there's no decreases or anything in these two rounds. It's just two rounds of knit stitches and then meet me back here. 
After you've worked your two rounds of knit stitches, you're then going to begin the decrease rounds to form the top of your hat. So what we're going to do for the first decrease round is chain one. You're going to work a knit stitch in each of the first six stitches. followed by a knit stitch two together. To work the knit stitch two together, insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That's your knit stitch two together. You're then going to repeat that, a knit stitch, in each of the next six stitches. Followed by a knit stitch, two together. Repeat that all the way around, and at the end of this round, for your large size, you will have a total of 64 stitches. At the end of your first decrease round, chain one, or join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and chain one. For round two, we're going to knit stitch in each of the first five stitches. Followed by a knit stitch two together. Now when you come to your two together down in the row below, you're just inserting your hook. You may have to push it through a little bit uh, through the space there and pulling up. You're then going to repeat that knit stitch in each of the next five stitches. followed by a knit stitch, two together. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 56 stitches. For round three, you're going to chain one, knit stitch in each of the first four stitches. and then knit stitch two together. Repeat that knit stitch in each of the next four stitches. Followed by a knit stitch two together. Repeat that all the way around, join with the slip stitch in the first stitch and chain one. For round four, you've joined with a slip stitch, chain one. We're going to knit stitch in each of the first three stitches. Followed by a knit stitch, two together. Repeat that knit stitch in each of the next three stitches, followed by a knit stitch, two together. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you're going to join with a slip stitch in the first stitch, and at the end of this round, you will have a total of 40 stitches. For round five, chain one, knit stitch in each of the first two stitches, and then knit stitch two together. Knit stitch in each of the next two stitches, 
followed by a knit stitch two together. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 32 stitches. For round six, for your decrease rounds, knit stitch in your first stitch, and then knit stitch two together. Repeat that, knit stitch in your next stitch, followed by a knit stitch two together. Repeat that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. At the end of this round you will have a total of 24 stitches. For round seven we're going to knit stitch two together in each stitch all the way around. Once you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and at the end of this round you will have a total of 16 stitches. Now at the end of round 7, if you are working the small size, you're going to fasten off at that point leaving a long tail. For this large size, we are going to work one more round of simple knit stitches in each stitch all the way around. This is just going to help us close in our top a little bit more. So simply knit stitch in each stitch all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. And I'm just going to keep working here. Just like so all the way around and then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and you're going to fasten off leaving a long tail. You're then going to take your yarn needle and turn your beanie inside out pull that tail through and thread it through your needle and then working around the stitches at the top opening of your beanie you're just going to weave the yarn in and out through those top stitches. All the way around. When you come around, just simply pull the top close and you will want to secure it. and then go ahead and weave in your end. Fasten off, turn your beanie right side out. If you would like, you can add a pom-pom to the top. You'll want to turn up your brim and your shamrock beanie is complete. I have my smaller size here as well, just like so. So enjoy, and thank you so much for joining me. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, say hello down in the comments, 
and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm-hmm.